Hey folks, before we get into today's episode, just wanted to let you know that there is some language not suitable for all listeners. So if you've got kids within listening distance, maybe put some headphones on or something. Okay, here we go. Hey psychos, welcome to the Film Nuts podcast. I'm your host, Taylor D. Adams, and I'm really excited about this week's episode. From the mid-2000s to the early teens, dark, gritty dramas had the fascination of fans and critics everywhere. Shows like The Wire, Breaking Bad, and The Shield were tense programs featuring complex character development, shocking twists, and gruesome events that were engrossing to millions of viewers. But one cable network was going in a different direction with their dramas, and without sacrificing quality. USA Network was putting their own spin on similar procedural programs by creating shows about unique characters that were fun, lighthearted, and just plain enjoyable to watch. And in the summer of 2006, a show about a fake psychic detective and his best friend captured the eyes and hearts of those looking to escape harsher realities. Psych is USA's longest running original series and still lives on today on streaming platforms like Amazon Prime Video. I'm joined today by Sam Slaughter, author and food and drink editor for The Manual. And for Sam, Psych was a show that demonstrated the power of friendship and caring for one another that maybe in some sense he was searching for. At the time of this interview, Sam's house was under construction after a drunk driver, unfortunately, ran into it. So he was eager for a distraction from all these stress and noise. So here's Sam Slaughter talking about Psych on the Film Nuts podcast. So when the guy hit my house, the the front wall oh, went, yeah, con- forgot about that. went concave. Uh, so like he hit the stone and then it sort of moved everything. So, uh, they've been working on the outside. Now they're finally working on the inside. Uh, cause there were cracks kind of all along the front wall. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's yeah. crazy. I forgot that that happened, man. That's, that's why yeah. it's weird thinking that just a few short months ago, the worst problem I had was a drunk driver hit my house. <laughs> Fucking 2020. 2020 has been nuts, man. Um, uh, so to kind of escape all this, have you been watching any psych recently? <laughs> I watched the uh, Twin Peaks episode this morning. Nice. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite ones, just because of the sheer amount of like cameos that they do that they're able to squeeze in. Yeah, and Psych's one of these shows that kind of it it got bigger the more it went on, which a lot of shows do. Um, but it got big to the point where just very niche guest stars just started appearing. Yeah. On a lot of episodes, so you have the tw- you have the Twin Peaks episode where pretty much everyone from the original s- season one or two of Twin Peaks ends up on the episode in some manner. Um, right. You've got people like uh, um, William Shatner ended up later on the episode or later on in the season. You've got um, Kevin Sorbo was there at one point. Yep. Yeah, like a bunch. John of John Cena. Yeah, John Cena. I feel well. That was more of a a network integration. Because it was a USA. Oh, that's right. Like. WWE. Okay. That makes a yeah. lot more sense. I haven't yeah. watched wrestling since I was a child. So <laughs> I was a, I was a WCW kid in my elementary to middle school years. WCW NWO revenge on N64 was my jam. That was a great game. So when, were you someone who started watching site from the beginning or did you kind of jump on it a little bit later? I got in probably around season, the end of season two. Mm-hmm. Um, I had seen just one random episode. Um, I I even forget which one it is, but it, I think it was free on iTunes. They used to do this thing where you could download shows and they would have like one free one a week. Uh, it's how I started watching Chuck as well, because hmm. they just had an episode and I, I downloaded it because I needed something to watch. And then it sort of just hooked me from there. And so I went back. Uh, this was before you know, Netflix and all that. And so I found the DVD at Target of season one and bought it and kind of powered through, I think in a weekend, just season one all done and then started following it from there. So like, what was it about the show that you kind of, I guess it's, if you want, if you want to say connected, you can use that word, but a lot of times it's just like, Oh, I find this entertaining because I just want to escape from, from the real world or whatever. Like what, what did you like about it? I, Outside of just the fact that they're, you know, the cameos that are there uh, are really well integrated, I think, and the references that they do, I like the amount of the 80s and 90s kind of pop culture that they throw in there 
from time to time. Um, but the the chemistry between Dulé Hill and James Roday was, you know, it was good in season one, but it just got so much better um, as the series went on. And so you you want to be best friends with them, um, and you know, just gallivanting around as they kind of makes shit up along. Was that unique to the show? You thought like was there something you saw in that chemistry that was unique to any other shows that you're watching or had seen before? I. I think the closest that it, the reason I think it appealed to me was I was a huge Scrubs fan in college and, you know, when it was out and I, you know, I bawled my eyes out on that last episode of the real end of the show. The, the chemistry between them reminded me a lot of how JD and Turk in Scrubs acted around each other. And it's that sort of buddy comedy kind of thing. Um, Wholesome probably isn't the right word, but like, again, you want to be their friend and want to be part of that. You want to have that sort of connection with someone where you can have these inside jokes or these phrases that only the two of you use and you can just have fun with it and know that at the end of the day, they've still got your back no matter what. Maybe I was searching for a friend. I mean, maybe so. I mean, a lot of people just look to TV characters to a relate to and B maybe they want to be relatable to them. Like they want to get to know these people. Um, right. And do you think uh, since you've recently watched some episodes, do you still think that the show kind of holds up like the end of it, the end of the show, or it ran from like 2006 to like 2014. So it didn't end that long ago. Um, but right. a lot of, a lot of, a lot can change in five or six years. Yeah. I think the, the last season was probably one of my least favorites um not only because it was ending but like some of the things seemed rushed um like the way that they they did a lot of if i remember correctly they did sort of a lot of those kind of themed episodes uh they did the recut i believe was one of them where they did cloudy with a chance of murder and yeah they did it completely differently uh which i thought that was interesting but the the storyline didn't really progress in a way but i i mean there was the inevitable was, you know, Sean and Juliet and then trying to figure all that out. And so to stretch that out over a season, I get why they sort of stepped out of the timeline more or less and didn't really push things forward. Yeah. That, uh, that revamp or remake or whatever you want to call it, um, was my least favorite episode ever. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was mad at it when I started watching it because, I was like, I have seen this exact episode before. And I know that that's the point. And I can't quite figure out if they were trying to be, I couldn't figure out if it was supposed to be like tongue in cheek, sneaky about it at all, or like exactly what they were trying to do with it. But yeah, I don't know. I remember just not, not digging it. <laughs> Wait, God, I'm getting really strong vibes here. What are you doing for the next eight years? Because I'm sensing that we become very much involved. You're way off on that, Sean. Do we have ups and downs? Mm -hmm. Sure, like anyone, but I can see it so clearly. Your corn silk hair nestled on this gentleman's shoulder, right in the crook. Oh, yeah, shake a leg. Never happening, Sean. Yeah, I think, though, a lot of the other episodes, I've been rewatching it just because, you know, while you know, we're recording during quarantine and all that like you need something very lighthearted, but also a feel good I, I watched yesterday the episode uh where Sean finally kisses Juliet uh so it's the second uh mm -hmm. episode with Carrie Ells when they're up in British Columbia and yeah. he like kisses her on the on the like the overlook uh yeah. after sort of trying to work up the courage to say that he loves her and all that stuff and so it's just that part is heartwarming and you know when all of that plays out I think they did a really good job with when she finds out that he is not actually psychic, like that tension for season, was it eight, seven, whatever it was, whatever the mm -hmm. season was before the last one. Um, that tension was really good. They played that out really well. I feel because you felt like uh, just a heart wrenching, just anxiety the entire time. Like part of your brain knows that they are going to stay together. You know, you can't, I don't think this is not Game of Thrones. You can't end a series and just rip that apart like that after spending so many seasons, 
slow building it. Um, but at the same time, you're like, oh shit, what is, what is going to happen here? Um, are these characters that I've invested in actually not going to end up together? Rewind a little bit. So I think like a year after I graduated college, so back in like 2010, um, Psych was doing a college tour and they were basically going around and airing the second half of the season premiere um, at colleges across the United States. And um, they came to uh, NC State and I was like, oh, I got to go. So end up and went. And it was really cool to actually watch that episode in a packed theater, like to hear um, to hear the applause from so many people like myself who really were rooting for these characters to get together and also just enjoyed the general psychness of it just right. enjoyed the whole vibe and it was really kind of cool can i just say what i what i came here to say please i have a motorcycle yes you do yes i do and you know what it is it is the purest form of freedom that i have ever experienced you zip through traffic you park anywhere you never have to take anyone to the airport you certainly don't have to help anyone move easily the best purchase i've ever made in my life and i have never regretted it not for one second great you love your motorcycle is there a point to this yeah there's a point the point is since i met you i i've been thinking about getting a car at each kind of tour stop they had a different writer or writer's assistant like hosting the the, mm -hmm. the gig um and so they had one of the writer's assistants there and he was talking about how like they would make a show and we also did like some trivia for the crowd and stuff like that. So it was, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, going back to what you said about the way the show handled Juliet finding out that Sean was not in fact psychic. I thought it was a really cool and fun episode because you knew like that he couldn't get away with this forever. Like some, he had to be found out by someone. Um, yeah. And Juliet was probably the worst and the best person that could find out. I'm good at what I do. And what I do, it's good, isn't it? What are you talking about? Are you telling me this is all a lie? Please don't make me answer that. Like, it makes total sense that she would be the first one to find out, um, outside of obviously, uh, uh, Gus and Henry, but just having her find out and the way that she handled it and the way that he handled that reaction, I thought was portrayed really well. And like probably in the, in the third season, we got to see a little bit more of James Ruday's kind of dramatic ish acting. I think mm -hmm. we got the best example of, or the first example of it in um, the first of the, the yin yang killer. Um, yeah. Episodes. That those episodes are intense and uh, having, I'm blanking on her name. Breakfast Club woman, um, be Al Ali Sheedy. Yeah. Having Ali Sheedy be this like completely insane person and being able to bring her back. Um, and you know, having, uh, you know, Sean's mom being involved in all of that. Those are very, very tense episodes. Let me guess you want to die, right? That's the perfect resolution. Gee, that's original. You're a cliche. You're knock off and knock off. I could have killed your mom hours ago, Sean. Switch has such a light touch, like pinching a baby's cheek. And then boom! She blows up. How much fun would that be to see? Oh, it gives me shivers. I want to do that so badly. But then you wouldn't like me, Sean. And I want you to like me. Oh, God, I'm so torn. I need you to like me. Because we're going to be working together again. No, no. You're going to run in a cell with four padded walls. The end. No, the end of the beginning. And you don't get to see it too often because he's usually the center of all of the jokes. But I think, too, one of the other episodes where it really shows, or set of two episodes, rather, is when Henry gets shot. Um, and Santa Sean Barbara comes, yeah. Yeah, comes upon it. And so that's the end of the season. Then the start of the next season is Sean going on basically the war path to kind of a make sure his dad is okay but also like find who shot him and avenge him um in his sort of 
typical way. Look, I know I haven't always been great. Holy crap, am I actually giving this speech? <sighs> Let's just skip to the end, okay? I appreciate what you do. Not always how you do it, but, you know, what you do is good. And I just, I, I don't think now is a good time for you to go, okay? That's all. I love you. French toast. They did, he did a really good job kind of translating that emotion of while he doesn't always get along with his father, there is a deep love and a deep connection there that has kept them working together for so long, you know, whether it's professionally when Henry comes on as a, the uh, consultant, consultant mm -hmm. or just Sean coming to Henry's house, which I want that house. Yes. Because for real. it's beautiful and I it's know. right on the beach. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite scenes is it's in the, the episode where he makes Sean build the dog house. And so mm -hmm. at the very end, Sean comes up with the little lab puppy and you, you, they sort of pan out and it's just the, the puppy with the dog house and it's just beautiful house. And then the, the, you know, the beach as you're coming away, like I want that house. Yeah. It's somewhere in Vancouver. Cause I know yeah. they taped in British Columbia. I think so the, somewhere uh, up there. the scenes that where you can see coastline are, it's like, just like 30 minutes to the, uh, to the west of Vancouver. I can't remember what exactly the town is called. Um, gotcha. But, and I, I, this is, we'll dive into like fun facts, I guess. The only real, I guess, blatant evidence you see that the show is filmed in uh, British Columbia is I think in the first season, there's a bus with a giant Union Jack flag on the back of it. And I can't remember the episode, but that was the moment where before I like knew where the show was filmed or knew anything about how making a television show actually right. happened. Um, I remember looking at that and I'm like, that's weird. Like, why would like, what, why would a union Jack be on the back of a bus? And then it was like, Oh, show was filmed in British Columbia. So I guess that make, kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, going back and we were talking about kind of uh, Juliet finding out that Sean is not in fact psychic. Uh, looking at that season, it's season seven and the episode is D's nups, which the episode titles alone, I feel like are worthy. Oh yeah, of. they did a really good job. <laughs> and I mean, that also gets at so many of the the references that they do and the homages, like the homages themselves, uh, whether it's the, you know, Friday the 13th or Twin Peaks or Close Encounters of the Third Kind, like any major 80s and early 90s, I would say, thing that happened in pop culture on like TV or movies, was touched at some point you know one of my favorite jokes is in the dinosaur episode we can get to uh what you were talking about but like in the dinosaur episode when they find the dinosaur they're trying to dig through everything and they make a joke about holes mm -hmm. which Dulé was sam the onion man in and it's just so quick <laughs> what is this looks like some kind of farmland or grazing plain oh look at that it's like that movie the one with uh, sigourney weaver aliens no alien no. Alien Resurrection. Gosh, the one with the holes in Shia LaBeouf. They had holes in Shia LaBeouf. The holes are in the ground, dude, like that. And John Voight was walking around all crazy. Oh, Anaconda. Yeah, never mind. Gorillas in the Mist. Death in the Maiden. No. Half Moon Street. Just let it go. And if you don't, have, if you haven't seen holes, it means nothing, but you know, they, they throw those things in all the time. And Corbin Burnson, who plays Henry, he was in LA Law. He mm -hmm. makes a joke about L.A. Law at some point being like a crappy show or something. Yeah. And you just sit there and go, I'm glad that they threw that throw that in. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I remember the L.A. Law reference in it. I haven't I haven't seen Holes, but I knew that Dulé was in it. So I understood that joke. I thought it was pretty funny. And there's actually like the episode where um, Sean infiltrates the whatever lodge like the uh, oh the like the masonic lodge thing. yeah whenever he infiltrates whenever it... that and his dad he finds out his dad is a member because his dad has a picture hanging on a wall it's a picture of him from la law 
Yeah. It's a painting of him, which I think is is kind of clever. Um yeah. this this show's kind of like it's it's so it's so interesting to me because I don't think it's like it's it's probably one of my favorite shows, but I wouldn't say it's like one of the best shows out there after like just watching it because I think like you can almost always see who the killer is. Like at some point, you can kind of like anticipate how they're going to solve some of the crimes. Um, but I mean, is that? I don't think that was ever the point, though, to be obscure about it. No, no, that's what I that's 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 what I'm saying is like I don't think they were trying to do that. I think they were trying to make a fun hour long detective show that really USA started delving into these more like light hearted. I guess you'd call it a dramedy. Um, lighthearted material that's an hour long like before this they did monk and then psych was kind of the next adventure into it and then they had like burn royal notice pains was yeah, there. royal pains burn notice white collar like these hour-long shows that were technically dramas because nobody makes like an hour-long comedy but they were so lighthearted and fun that they were easily digestible and they were the char- characters were so easy to relate to and connect with but one of the things right. that i really uh, enjoy about the show and has a special place in my heart for it. it was the f- it was the first show that I watched that made me want to work in television because it was apparent from episode one that everybody behind the production of the show in front of the camera behind the camera whatever like they were having fun and that's what made yeah. me like super interested in this and just to see a complete ensemble from like I said ref- in front of and behind the camera having fun making something was like, oh, this, this is a job. Like, I, I can do this. Like, this is great. Like, I want to, I want to get involved in stuff like this. Well, I love that Steve Franks, the the creator of it, he's the one that does the theme song. Like, it's his band that does the theme song. The Friendly Indians. Yep. Yeah, and so you you find that out, and then even on the theme song, when they do certain special episodes, like the uh, the one with Keenan Thompson, when you you see that. Gus is in was in an acapella band. They have boys to men do it. They do, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they do it in Spanish when uh, Sean stars on the telenovela. Mm-hmm. Um, they have and Twin Peaks one, obviously, mm-hmm. all the Christmas ones kind of have a jingle to them. You know, they all have they have these special kind of little things that just enhance that episode even more. It's it- such a small addition, but at the same time, it it sets you up for the next, you know, 40 minutes of just enjoying yourself. And kind of the TV world we live in right now, you know, the TV theme song is becoming extinct. So when you have something super catchy and fun that like this, and then you can have fun with it, like you said, doing the different iterations of it. I think Kurt Smith did a cover of it one time too. Mm -hmm. Um, Just being so obvious that this entire adventure is supposed this entire endeavor is supposed to be fun is it's it's just nice to see yeah i think the uh, i was trying to think of other shows and i i don't want i I watch tv obviously but the only one that i came up with that did something like that i think it was um weeds they had an entire season where people did little boxes uh and it was just Mm -hmm. a different artist every time but that was one season of it not across the entirety of the series I do remember that um, community like, has. Reg- Go ahead. I was going to say, like, I know Regina Spector did a cover of Little Boxes, and then I didn't say Rise Against It, but that that I might be conflating that with when they did the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas song. Anyway, continue. I gotcha. um, yeah, Community does something similar too. Like they have their their theme song, and it's I I could be wrong on this. I don't know. Maybe I'll fact check myself later. But I don't know if the song. I don't think the song was written for Community. I think it's a song that community found but they do different versions of it like when they do the dungeons and dragons episode it's like an epic score of the song um they when they did abed's uncontrollable christmas it's basically the song but abed singing different lyrics or um and it's just stuff like that just like yeah there's not a lot of can you can you think of a show like right now like that is currently airing that still has like a memorable theme song um i think there's no no lyrics in them, but Bob's Burgers has a very distinct. Yep. And I mean, I know that y'all like Bob's Burgers. I, I like Bob's Burgers, but like that, uh, that theme song is very distinct. Um, I think also Superstore has a fairly distinct jingle. Again, no words, but like 
yeah. in the in the way that we kind of live in uh, and watch and uh, consume media, you have you know it's on Hulu. It's like you have that NBC tone, and then it immediately goes into you know the the superstore thing, or yeah. you have the Fox jingle, and then it goes into the Bob's Burgers thing, and so you're yeah. kind of mind is trained at that point to know sort of what's going to come after that jingle or the NBC sound. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if they, yeah. And if TV shows are still coming out with like jingles and theme songs, I feel like they are getting shorter and shorter. Um, Cause I know the, at Superstore jingle, what must be like four seconds long. Uh, it's just, yeah. Repeated the, yeah, over the and Bob's over. Burgers theme. They have a full song length. Like I guess if you want to say 90 seconds is a full song, you can, um, I have the, I have the Bob's Burgers LP uh, collection. <laughs> I just ordered the Bob's Burgers cookbook, so I'm very excited for that. Is it? Oh, is it just? Yeah, the burger book. Yeah, we ordered. Yeah. Uh, we I have that, and um, that's a lot of fun. We haven't gone through all the recipes yet, but um, I think we've I, done f- we've done four or five, and they've been really good. And we just keep rotating them. I used to have used to have it, um, and so we would work through burgers probably at least once a month, hmm. uh, and just pick out random ones, which was good. But back to psych. <laughs> yeah, but back to psych. Um, what do you, uh, what's your favorite episode? Or I, I always like to ask this question. Do you have a favorite episode and do you have an episode that you think is the best? Because I do think there is a difference. I think my favorite episode is the one where they reenact the hangover. Oh, what the hell? Dear Lord, please tell me this is a dream. Calm down, Peaches. Come back to bed. Whatever you think happened last night didn't happen because nothing happened. You got it? That's nice, Lassie. Way to belittle the man. Yeah, Detective. I I do have feelings. What is all over your face? Yeah, I can't be sure. Oh, God. You, you, You didn't see a small Colombian with a hook for an arm, did you? No. No. Why do you have a black eye? Okay. It's nothing to freak out about. Everybody relax. It's not a big deal. It's just a small shiner. Les, he's absolutely right. His lover's spat with Woody is really none of our business. I should call my wife. No. We don't keep secrets. Nobody's calling anybody. So it's Lassie, Woody, and Sean wake up sort of in the office, and they have to figure out what happened the night before. Like, I, I love Woody. He, the addition of him as the coroner, uh, like I like him in other stuff, obviously, but the addition of him as the coroner and having just such a weird personality, adding that into the mix of things where, you know, the comments that he makes are the ones that stop a conversation dead because you're like, what the hell did he just say? Mm -hmm. Um, And then when you add that with the sort of analytical mind of Lassiter, who is very, he gets very concerned in that episode that he like, you know, I think, is that the one where he, did he kill a guy? Is that what they're trying to figure out? Yeah, they're trying to figure out if he killed the guy or not. Yeah. And so, you know, the very analytical mind, then Sean doing his thing, and then Henry just kind of there uh, offering his sage advice. Like, the mixture of those four things coming together is just so wonderful and so funny. There's a mix of, you know, the slapstick comedy and just the... There again, the dynamic between the actors, you can tell they're having fun, like you said. They are enjoying being together and like sort of going through this journey together. Um, I think that is my favorite episode. Uh, I think the best one that's tough. Um, the dinosaur one is good. I, th- I think honestly, like the the y- uh, ying yin yang killer yeah uh triptych of episodes are the best because mm-hmm. there's three total right yeah there yeah. is three total they're uh it's it's they're all finales too so i think it's season three four and five finales yeah um, i think those three as a just a, a unit are the best episodes because you get so much stuff in them um not only the humor but you get to see you know all of the 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 tension and the the acting ability of everyone um you know and not just the the guest stars gus sean we got her it was close but we got her she's okay thank god oh thank god abigail's okay too she's good 
Because he was here. I saw him. I could have touched him. But I had to let him go. You had no choice. You did the right thing. You know, this game isn't over. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that first one for me, um, that first finale, I should say. Um, and the first one's the movie theater one, right? Yes, An Evening with Mr. Yang. Um, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, it's it's tough for me to do the distinction between uh, favorite and best because there's so many different reasons for me to pick a favorite. And then when it comes to a best, though, like I really have to take into account like all just kind of a all the different skill sets, I guess, uh, that go into making an episode from the writing, directing, acting, whatever. Right. Um, I do think, I think one of my favorite episodes is probably um, High Top Fade Out, and that's the one with Keenan Thompson and Julia White, um, just because that's a ton of fun, and it really focuses a lot on uh, Gus's emotions from a non-comedic standpoint, um, mm-hmm. because it deals with him being heartbroken in college and being heartbroken at the time. And then also continually being heartbroken that he's not friends with the people that he once called friends. You two slept with my girlfriend. She wasn't your girlfriend. She was a groupie. An acapella groupie that exists. Hey, it was college B. I mean, we had the matching jacket <laughs> and free biscuits and gravy after every show. It doesn't matter what you two saw as I was way into her. She was into me and you knew that you don't fall in love with a groupie. That's part of the code. Even Patrick Fugit knows that. You also don't sleep with your bandmates, girl. That's the code. Well, I thought the code was about not having a fling with your best friend's sister. Wait a minute. You hooked up with Joy? What? Well, <laughs> my hero. <Here> he's up. <laughs> stop it, Sean. No, you stop it, gee whiz. You broke up Black Capella, man. We were going places. The whole world was our oyster, man. Everybody loved her. Did you see that video at the funeral? We looked like idiots. Those were hammer pants. Five years behind the curve. It wasn't about becoming the next anybody. We played a few shows at the Student Center and the Cinnamon Festival, and that's it. It was about college and friendship and having the best times of our lives. And you betrayed me. The both of you. Got your minds mixed up in all kinds of nonsense, and it broke my heart. I think it's really impactful. Um, and then the episodes that are that where James Roday has a hand in the writing or directing are a lot of my favorites too. Like Tuesday the seventeenth is one of my is one of my favorites. The the Friday the thirteenth homage. Yeah. Um, and then I always come for some reason I always come back to this one whenever someone says like what's your favorite I always immediately say uh, American duos. Talking away. I don't know what I hope to say. I'll say it anyway. Slowly learn that life is okay. Wrong verse. I'll become a feel of okay. Take on me. Take on me. Take me. Take on me. Really? Well, that was um, something. The season two premiere. Oh, season two premiere. Yeah. It, yeah. The not only because Tim Curry is in it. Yeah. But like that. Yeah, that is a a solid one. I think I literally, you know, paid the three dollars or whatever it was to download that specific episode on iTunes so that I had it and could watch it just over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um. Or maybe that was the one that I got for free. <laughs> I don't remember. That was in college. That was a while ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is the 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 talent on display in that one is great. Yeah, I uh, and I think too. I think that's the first time I really distinctly remember um, Juliet having a personality outside of being the love interest and. Um, junior detective um i think it was the first time where we got a little bit of kind of her background story and a very small like kind of kernel of information um that led to like her being a pretty endearing character throughout the uh throughout the whole episode throughout the whole season series i should say and you mentioned the the sort of the word on or you mentioned the word ensemble before and we've talked about juliet and gus like i think they did a really good job of having episodes that highlight every other character that is not sean You know, Gus Mm -hmm. obviously gets it a little more than others, but like Henry has an episode, Lasseter has an episode, uh, 
Chief Vic has an episode. Mm-hmm. I think Woody has an episode. Obviously, yeah. Juliet has an episode. They all, and then Buzz is in there as well, which mm-hmm. Buzz being this like lovable doofus who gets to help save the day, but also is always going to be there for you. Like they all get these episodes where you get to see inside all of that. And, you know, with Lassiter, his, you have his relationship or his, his divorce. And then you finally get to sort of see the emotional uh, trouble that he has gone through that he is very much hiding down. And then you have, you know, obviously the banter between Sean and, and Lassie going back and forth, but then you also see, you know, Sean legitimately cares about him. They Mm -hmm. can yell at each other all they want, but at the end of the day, they definitely care about each other. And that is a very heartwarming thing to see, but it's also, it was really well rendered. You know, it took five seasons to finally get to that point or whenever it was five, six, whatever. Um, but you know, again, all that buildup, I think, you know, led to just such a, a beautiful moment of, of friendship, uh, that then, you know, led through to the rest and, you know, him becoming chief and all that. And Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that series finale with basically Sean leaving a message to everyone, uh, about like what what the truth is. I'm putting truth through. Uh, excuse me. I'm putting truth in air quotes. Um, and Lassiter and starting it. listen to it and then just breaking physically breaking yeah. the the CD or the DVD or whatever. Carlton Lassiter, Chief Lassie, the Lord of Sternbush. I am proud, honored, and baffled to call you my friend. But it's true. It's also true that you might be the only other person on the planet who loves jewels as much as I do, even though it's different. You've always had her back, and for that, I feel I owe you more than the others, so... Time to come clean. Regarding my methods and the way that I solve cases, you're the only one that's ever suspected that, uh... truth is I am not chief yep there I don't think as in right now on May 1st uh, there isn't too many details about when the premiere date of psych 2 Lassie come home is supposed to be Um, but I am excited about it because of unfortunately um, Timothy Amundsen having the the stroke that he had, um, where he could not be uh, in Part the first the movie. Psych movie. Yeah, well, he was in there for a very limited yeah. capacity, but you and I tell, love. He, you yeah. could tell he was recovering from it, and it felt like I think everyone knew too involved with the movie were like, we got to do another one at least to have him in there because he's such a big part of this family that we need to do an, almost a movie entirely about him. Yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, when he first came on in that movie, I was bawling. Yeah. Uh, because they, I mean, they had to rewrite the script uh, of the first movie so that they could incorporate him and still have him in the movie. And so mm-hmm. I think they did it in a really just beautiful way to still have him involved um, in some sort of respect. Yeah. And even like it, you know, it's unfortunate that they had to do that. But yeah, like you said, the way they did it, the way it was just ended up just basically being a FaceTime call. It's actually yeah. kind of the best that they could do, but also it had so much impact because I think everyone who had any interest in seeing the movie knew the behind the scenes that was going right. on. Because that's the thing is like, this can be a casual show that you just happen to pop on and enjoy. But the people that are really into the show, like know like probably way too much about everybody on the show. And I wouldn't even say that that's a bad thing. Like way too much is in like maybe the people that are participating in the show, the actors, directors aren't entirely aware possibly about how much fans care about everybody that's involved with the show. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, it just, again, it's been off the air for six years now, but, and I, I've been watching it the past week since we first started talking about this, but like, you know, I, I don't remember a lot 
uh, and I can still recall, you know, most of the episodes and still, you know, I have just such a fondness for, it gives a, a warming feeling on the inside just to <laughs> sort of boot up an old episode and, and see that, or even like go back and see. So uh, Wayne from Letterkenny was in one of the episodes he plays uh it's the one with uh the sort of like the school for men or whatever he plays the one guy who's getting coached by oh, the etiquette coach yeah, yeah 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 okay but he's in it um and so you see him now obviously letter kenny has exploded now that hulu has it and not just crave tv mm -hmm. but you go back and you're like this was way before he was he you know wayne from letter kenny but you get to see him and he's still funny um, and you get to see him before he was famous or known or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, guest star wise, I guess at that point, like he like was kind of coming up, so you didn't really like possibly know too much about it, but going back to talking about guest stars, um, can you think of one off the top of your head that might be your favorite guest star? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I think that Keenan Thompson, Jaleel White episode probably takes it for me. Mm -hmm. Like there, they do a really good job of not only that sort of emotional uh, growing up from college and kind of trying to get over it, but I mean, Keenan Thompson, he's been, he's what the longest tenured SNL person now. Yep. Uh, he's been kicking it for so long and he's come, you know, I remember him on all that. Yeah. He's been doing back. his thing. He's been doing his thing for a while. And I think he, I think I read an article that he just got, penned finally to do to have his own show on nbc i think coming up in the next in the Jeez. fall or whatever like that it's only taken him like 20 years i know i'm, uh, I'm happy i'm like but everything he's in though i watch and i love and oh he's yeah he's great in that and even when they did kind of the the sequel to high top fade out where they couldn't get julia white but they had mckay pfeiffer i still thought mm -hmm. that was a pretty fun episode um I, I think, think that one, go oh, ahead. sorry. And then my second would be anytime Ray Wise is on. So the Twin Peaks episode. <laughs> yes. It's only now that it begins to dawn on me how little you learned in my CCD class. Uh, Father, it's very important that we understand what these passages mean. All right, well, this first part talks about a young boy she was seeing, someone popular. Randy. Yeah, that makes sense. She refers to him as R. Ah, and she may have also been seeing someone else. Excellent. Is there a name? No, just the letter J. Letter J. All right, thank you, Father. You've been so much help. Gus will see you at church on Sunday. Uh, what about you? What? Oh, you're breaking up. What? what? Can't hear anything. Hello, Father? Oh, well, wait, wait, there's more. One you of go. the guest stars that always pops back into my mind is actually The Big Show. Um, I think it was in season seven where they do kind of the Blair Witch homage. Um, I think that's an underappreciated episode because, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, like, why certain people don't like it. But for me, I really like the Blair Witch Project. So I was really into their kind of homage to it, but also poking fun at the fact that you can't really envision Sean and Gus surviving in the wilderness. And they really point that out. And there's just a bunch of like slapstick comical moments. Like there's a moment where a hawk drops out of the sky and steals a video camera. And I just die right. laughing uh, every time. Cause it's the last thing I ever expected to happen in this show. And for some reason it just kills me every time. Um, and then with, uh, Michael Anthony Hall, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a uh, trout, um, the bad guy that he really was kind of a, just there to be a villain. Um, which I don't think we get a lot of nowadays, like nowadays, if there's a villain, like we have to kind of like humanize them and justify them. But sometimes it's just easier just to have an enemy that everybody can rally around. Um, and I think for this particular show, it worked because it threatened, everything about the show like it was eliminating chief vic and we knew the show was kind of winding down so we weren't exactly sure what was going to end up happening so i just thought it was kind of uh it was kind of effective um yeah for for sure i wasn't listening what am i doing here you, no you no you raised your voice look no one is losing their job over this this bark is much worse than a spite no 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 you are on your own now okay don't ever call me again mothers anyway so where were we Oh, it's Anthony Michael Hall, not Michael Anthony Hall. I don't know why I was confusing. How names. dare you? I know. How dare I'm I? going to tag him in this on Twitter. <laughs> and then he will be non plus because 
he probably won't listen. But if you're listening, hello, and I loved you in <laughs> all of your movies. And everything in that movie. Also, James Hurd and Dulé Hill, if you're listening. And the entire cast, really, if anyone's listening. Hello. Yeah, for sure. Um, Sorry. Yeah, hello. I'm excited. I'm excited to... Uh, I'm excited. Whenever the Psych 2 Lassie Comes Home comes out, uh, I'm excited to delve into that. Um, oh, and there's one more kind of lasser thing. This is kind of a funny story. Um, I don't know if uh, my girlfriend, Nicole, is going to like me sharing the story, but it's 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 a good story. Uh, one of the best Lassie episodes is Here's Lassie, which is the Shining homage. Um, there's a moment where I believe, I can't remember if it's Lasser or Gus, is down in the laundry room kind of hunting a suspect. And they, we end up kind of seeing and finding a dead body in the dryer. And it's one of those side loading dryers with the glass door um, that you can see in. And for some reason, uh, my girlfriend saw that and like jumped and kind of like just screamed just a little bit and then started, (laughs) and then started laughing that that scared her and then started crying. And couldn't stop. And I was like, what is happening? She's like, I don't know. But it was like, but having me having started watching this show when it first aired and then kind of like, and then when I started uh, dating Nicole, introducing her to it and then catching her up at the moment. And then we watched like the last two seasons together. um, It was cool just to like get that moment where we collectively could enjoy how the show ended and how it's still living on with the movies that they're doing. Um, I think that's one of the things too, is I tell a ton of people to watch the show because it's so fun. And even when it first came out, I was like super into it. I remember kind of like this and I think this came out like two years, maybe a year after lost and lost was the first TV show that I got really into. And then this was the second one. Like I was just super into this one. Like it came on on Fridays and even in college, like it came on Fridays at nine. I would not go out and party with my friends until I watched psych. Like I would watch psych and then I'd be like, okay, let's go do whatever. Um, back when we had cable back when we had, yeah. Back when we had cable and we couldn't, couldn't be like, Oh, I'm just going to watch it whenever I want to. No, we had to wait. <laughs> remember, remember when cable was a thing. I don't remember when commercials came on and they last. Remember when going outside and seeing people was a thing too? <laughs> Man, actual those early two thousands were crazy. A- actual human interaction is a uh, is is rare right now. Um, I guess I have a question for you. So yeah. you talk, I mean, obviously the the show they did the movie. What are your thoughts on that sort of thing? Like, I know Community's tagline was always six seasons in a movie, and they you know for Psych they did the eight seasons and then the movie about, you know, psych Francisco. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that, do you think it was a successful, successful transition? Uh, And like a a nice kind of, obviously now it's not like an end cap because they're doing another one, but do you feel it was a nice way to continue the kind of that world? I think so because it's all about, for me, it ended up being all about the characters and like just to have another hour uh, and a half to spend with the characters that with you spent people, yeah. eight years with is, is really all that you need. And like, and the way that they're rolling out these movies too, like they're rolling them out. Um, well, the first psych movie was on USA. Um, the second psych movie will be on Peacock, NBC Universal streaming platform. Um, I think it's successful enough. I think they're doing it because, I mean, the actors are doing it because they're getting paid. Uh, but they also must enjoy doing it because they wouldn't keep doing, because this is not a, I guess you, right at this point, you can call it a franchise. This is not a franchise that is going to make a ton of money. It's going to perform for the niche market that is already in love with psych. And then hopefully with these, like now that psych lives on streaming platforms, like Amazon prime, like hopefully more people will get into it. And then maybe that'll carry over toward these movies. But I think it's, I think it's, I think it's good and good from the standpoint of it's good to have it. Like I'm sure I'm like, if, if it sucked, that. I, if it sucked, I would, if come on, son. I'm trying here. <laughs> You're just trying to slip in all these, all these, all, all these them. liners. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. I've got like six more. So <laughs> they're going to come rapid fire right now. What? <laughs> it's just kind of good to have it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a, fantastic piece of artwork it needs to be true to who the characters are 
and it needs to be fun and it needs to be entertaining and authentic, I guess is the best way for me to put it. Like even with now that we pretty much have like a Breaking Bad franchise, like there's Breaking Bad, there's Better Call Saul, there's the El Camino movie, which I watched it and I enjoyed it. Did I think we need did I think we need it? No, but I have not I enjoyed, seen it yet. I enjoyed watching it. It was it was cool to be back in that world for a little bit to hang out with Jesse Pinkman. Um but yeah, I think the, what they're doing right now, and if they keep doing psych movies, like I'd be okay with that. Because at this point, like it becomes kind of just a fun thing. You don't have to stress too much about missing if you do miss it, if that makes sense. Because um, they did the first one. They're coming out with Psych 2, Lassie Come Home. If And it'll be, I th- it's coming out this year. Like I said, don't know when, but it'll be, I think, three years since we did the first psych movie. Um, and if they three years already, yeah, holy shit. Well, it's December of 2017. So it's kind of like two and a half. Um, where the hell is time gone? Taylor? (laughs) Uh, That's a great question. But if they did another one in two or three years, I'll be there to watch it. Do you think it's psych Two the movie or psych three, the movie that Sean and Juliet have a kid? Ooh. Yeah. That could be. That could also be the setup for the third movie. That could be the setup for the third movie. I I would like to see actually. I need. I would like to see Gus I also have want to see some Gus success. Get married. Yeah. I, I want to see Gus have personal, uh, personal success. He's got career success. He's got friend success. He needs a little a little love success would be warranted for for his character. Um, yeah. Because the the voicemail on his play a phone is full. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean. Yeah, that's all I got, man. Is there anything else you kind of want to touch on or talk about? Uh, have you heard about Pluto? It's messed up, right? It's messed up. <laughs> okay, I think that's a good segment to end on. <laughs> uh, hey, man, thanks for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Oh, this has been great. This is so much fun. Psych is one of my favorite shows of all time. It would become another brick in USA's early foundation of original programming that would ground the network in making shows about people who relied on their loved ones. And I feel that, especially in this time, connecting with our loved ones is something we can take for granted. So while our world is at a standstill, let's be sure to reach out to the ones we care about and maybe watch a little psych to brighten our days. So that's it for this week. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe to keep up with all of our episodes and please rate us and leave us a review so we can know how we're doing. So until next time, wait for it.